Welcome to Cigar Advisor Master Blender's video edition. I'm Gary Korb, executive editor for Cigar Advisor Magazine, and I'm here with a very special guest. It is Klaus Peter Kellner. He is the son of one of the cigar industry's major, major cigar makers, that is Hendrik Kellner. And uh, he's renowned for his work with Davidoff and Avo Cigars. And Klaus has worked closely with his father, and he is now the senior brand ambassador for Davidoff Cigars. And he's in town for a Davidoff dinner tonight, which is taking place at Leaf Restaurant and Cigar Lounge, and which is right next to our studio here in Eastern Pennsylvania. And we're glad he's able to make time for us. So Klaus, welcome to Master Blenders. It's a pleasure again. Thank you for having me, Gary. And uh, I'm gonna start with the question I ask everyone that I've you know, never met before. We are meeting for the first time. Yeah. Um, what is the first cigar you ever smoked? And what do you remember about it? Mm. To be honest, I do not know what's the first cigar I ever tasted. Mm -hmm. And I say tasted because I don't say I smoked that cigar. Okay, um, fair enough. The first cigar I ever tasted uh, at, in the Dominican Republic, growing mm -hmm. up in a cigar family, obviously, I was four years old. <laughs> so, obviously, I do not really remember what cigar it was. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I have to mention a cigar that I grew up seeing a lot and then I was smoking constantly, not constantly, maybe once a, or twice a, a year mm -hmm. as I was growing up, was the Grand Cru Number no. 3. Oh. Yeah, okay. so actually, I grew up listening to my father uh, do seminars and tastings. Mm -hmm. And the cigar that he does most tastings with is the Grand Cru Number no. 3. I see. And. Basically, I have very vivid memories of me tasting this cigar like at the age of seven, eight, nine. Hmm. But I didn't really start smoking cigars like on my own until I was 16 years old. Sure. So, uh, Grand Cru number three for your answer. <laughs> okay. It's a complicated, right. long-winded answer. It's a but. good one too, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and speaking of growing up, what is it like growing up in the tobacco business? Uh, mm. You grew up in the Dominican, I assume, so, okay. Yeah, I'm born What's and raised. Like yeah. Born and raised in Dominican Republic. Uh, born and raised in a cigar family, tobacco family. I am third generation. Mm -hmm. So, Klaus Peter uh, is actually a Dutch name, Klaus Peter Kellner. My right. grandfather, first generation, moved from Holland to the Dominican Republic oh. um, and started working in tobacco. Actually, the whole family worked in tobacco. So, my grandfather and his three brothers, my father, his cousins, mm -hmm. all my uncles, all my aunts, my uh, my cousins, my brothers and sisters, we all work in tobacco. Right. So yeah. you kind of grow up in it and uh, you love it. There is no other choice, you know. Yeah. It's a really interesting, very family oriented, very friend oriented people uh, industry. And uh, especially growing up in the farms, in the tobacco bales, in the, in the warehouse, playing hide and seek. <laughs> you know, sure, playing yeah. tag between the cigar rollers and the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, you grow up to love it, and again, there's no choice, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my father did give me a choice if I was going to go into the industry or not. But oh, in my okay. mind, I was dead set on it, you know. There was, really? Yeah, okay. there was no choice. Early on. So, you, so you've been working with your father. What's your relationship like uh, at this point? My father, uh, to whoever knows him, mm -hmm. is... Uh, a very uh, friendly person, a very funny person, especially if you can speak Spanish with him. Oh. Uh, and in that language, there's no barriers of communication whatsoever. I say my dad is fluent in two languages, in Spanish and in English, only when he talks in tobacco. Okay. <laughs> he knows all the tobacco terms in English. Yeah. But um, basically, I grew up with him as a mentor, you know, as a father figure, and sure. somewhere around the age of 17, I start stop seeing him more less of a dad, but more as a friend. Hmm. He okay. he's uh, we're on a very friendly basis where I call him. Uh, if I don't call him every day, he gets mad at me, <laughs> and it ha I have to have continuous conversations with him. And it's never really about tobacco. It's just how are you and what's up with the world. Any cheese mm -hmm. me? Uh, any <laughs> gossip that you've heard in the industry lately? Because uh, <laughs> right. somehow all the gossip ends up with him, but. Uh, we have a working relationship where he's very tough on me and mm, well. uh, I have to be up to his standards, especially when it's about blending and it's about tobacco philosophy or mm -hmm. cigar philosophy about being consistent and being very uh, mm -hmm. precise about this craft mm -hmm. that we do. 
Okay, where do you tend to disagree with him sometimes? We don't disagree on many things. I, the, I guess you could say that the only thing I really disagree on him is that I think he should be tougher sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, do you have different tastes in terms of what cigars you like? Or are you pretty much on the same par? We uh, are on the same par. We both go to different trends. So mm -hmm. sometimes he'll like go into like drinking bourbon and I'll go into drinking rum. Okay. And like we'll go into different uh, trends and different stages of our life. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have a joke where he says that uh, I'm getting older, and as I, the older you get, you're, you want to stray away from the intensity f uh, of different flavors. So it's like I'm starting to like softer cigars lately, oh. where I'm more on the left. So I'm more on the side where I'm developing my palate, mm. and I'm getting little by little into stronger cigars. Really? Yeah, that tends to be the mm -hmm. course I've noticed with that. And you know, um, I'm well, I'm probably old enough to be your father. <laughs> like I know I am, uh, and I'm kind of like. I'm just not enjoying the really strong, peppery cigars. Mm -hmm. I just, I never really did like cigars that were very peppery. Um, but I like more of like a medium full, you know, mm -hmm. at this point. But um, you're an ambassador. What does a Davidoff ambassador do? So, to begin my career in the cigar industry, let's say the at the point where I got it started, like, uh, getting paid to actually work in this mm -hmm. because okay. before that I say it's community service. <laughs> you know, growing up is community service in the cigar industry. But um, when I started getting paid, I first started as I, I first started in the farm and in the factory. Okay. So I did a sort of internship where basically I worked a couple months in every single department mm -hmm. the company has to offer uh, to an employee. So I learned basically every step of the way from seed creation to greenhouses, fermentation, aging, farming, uh, wow. blending, all three factories that the company had at that time. Mm -hmm. And then also distribution and marketing. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I'm blessed to have had the opportunity to see every step of the way. Wow. Lately, I have been, uh, I have fallen on the side of marketing and sales, mm -hmm. so now I'm an ambassador uh, that represents the company and gets to teach and preach uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in a form of a seminar of what we do. So I get to, I, I get to say that I'm a teacher for something I love. You know, that's what being an ambassador mm -hmm. is. You represent and you mm -hmm. teach what you love. And if you love it, it's easy. And if you know it, then it's credible. You know, right. so you have to live it for in order to be very credible. So I really, really enjoy being an ambassador, and I really enjoy uh, traveling around the world and meeting different people that smoke mm -hmm. different cigars, and then trying to brainwash them into loving my cigars too. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Now um, I understand one of one of your jobs is you you take uh, tourists on the tour of the factory and the the uh, fields. Is that true? Yes. And uh, give us can you give us a virtual tour of you know yeah. uh, what what they what they get to see so if you go down to dominican republic mm -hmm. um, the factory is in a town called villa gonzalez okay. it is about 30 minutes outside of santiago in the valley of the cibao valley of dominican republic so mm -hmm. it's in the center right um, normally a tour takes two days if you really want to do it well mm -hmm. it's about two to three hours uh, in the farm and the fermentation warehouses okay. and then it's about two to three hours in the factory and then we try to split it into two days. One day is very rough. Sure, yeah, and that's you, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You'll go to the farm really early in the morning, and mm -hmm. if you're blessed to be on one of the tours, for example, that we host uh, for retailers or for influencers or for uh, Pro Cigar, and Pro Cigar, we open it up to the public, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually have breakfast in the farm. Yeah, I've been to Pro Cigar, yeah. and it's, it's great. Yeah, and it's a blast. It's mm -hmm. a three-day party of just smoking all the cigars you can and Pretty drinking much. and eating <laughs> all you can. But if you get to have breakfast in the farm at 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, sun is rising, mist is lifting, it's beautiful. That's where you start off. And then we will have you do certain activities because this is not certainly a free thing, right? Right. right. we got to make you work. Exactly. <laughs> and we will basically make you, or if you want, uh, plant your own plants, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes sow your own seeds. So you get the full experience, a very hands-on experience. Um, of course, there's all the Kodak moments, let's yeah. call them, where you take a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be very immersive into the science and why this is something so special. It's a product that takes five years to make. I mean, you're sure. seeing five years of work in two days. I know, it's amazing. And then you move to the factory. You see fermentation, you get to touch all the tobaccos, you see the aging, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you can go on one of the bales with me, you know, okay. take another picture, uh, <laughs> talk about aging, smell the tobaccos. It's really all mm -hmm. about senses, aromas and touching. Mm -hmm. And then if you're lucky enough, we get to also make some cigars with you. So we will oh, nice. sit you down, roll some cigars. You have two supervisors with you helping mm -hmm. you do the bunch, put on the really? wrapper. And, uh, and if you're even more lucky, you get to do a seminar. Oh, right. <laughs> and if you do a seminar, then you might be able to get to pick your own blend. And yeah. you get to pick your own blend. And the cigar that you roll is the cigar that you chose, that you blended yourself. Nice. You know, so nice. there's a lot of really cool activities that we can do with a visitor. Um, mm -hmm. if the program is there for it. Okay. Right? All right. Well, speaking of blends, what we are smoking today, Klaus and I, are the new 50th anniversary. It's David O's 50th anniversary this year. And this is the Chef's Edition. It is a fascinating story how this came about. And I know you were very involved with it. So please, you know, tell us how this all, all came about. And uh, This is a really happening. fun project. Um, you know, cigars is all about, you know, a craftsmanship and when right. you're talking about blending you're blending different tobaccos and you can look at it in this form of also each tobacco is a separate ingredient sure each ingredient will give something to the overall flavor intensity aroma taste mm -hmm. and you have some tobaccos that are sweet some tobaccos sure. that are salty some tobaccos that are bitter and you play around with these ingredients to create your final meal right right and this is some a project that started in 2016 okay. uh, with uh, five different chefs okay. and uh, some of them Michelin star, Michelin star chefs. Okay. Uh, the cigar was relaunched in 2017, but now 2018, this is a brand new cigar with five new chefs. So the cigar oh. that we're smoking is a 2018 chef's edition, limited edition with five chefs, uh, all Michelin star chefs. Mm -hmm. And between all five of them, there's 12 Michelin stars. Wow. Uh, one of them is uh, from Hong Kong. He's the demon chef, Alvin Leung. The other one is from the United States, Thomas Keller, uh, from okay. French Laundry in California, okay. in Napa. And one of them is from the UK, mm -hmm. Sean Rankin, right. uh, Heiko Nieder. Oh, yeah. And then also um, Klaus Effort. Okay. And they're all very friendly. They're all very down to earth, which is uh -huh. really nice. Yeah. I got, I've had the pleasure of meeting three of them. Okay. And, uh, and they're all cigar smokers. So what we did is we developed blends to their standards with their tasting notes, what they wanted to mm -hmm. see from us. And we sent them many, many samples, a lot of interviews to see what they liked, what they didn't like. Mm -hmm. And in the end, all five of them had to come into agreements in one single blend. <laughs> And it That's was pretty tough. it was much These easier guys. than what it sounds like because really? they all kind of lean towards a certain type of blend. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what we have here. This is uh, much more on the medium full, so mm -hmm. definitely not overpowering, but it's also, it plays a lot with your palate. So as you smoke, it's very peppery, very spicy in the center of the palate. There's a little bit here, not, not as much, but it's a lot of spices. Uh, and then some bitters in the back, but it plays really? around. It plays around and it, st it stings in all over the palate. Just enough mm -hmm. sweet, but it's more spicy and bitter than mm -hmm. anything else. Well, I'm not getting much pepper. Mm -hmm. I am getting spice, mm -hmm. and I uh, really get that little like nice cedar component too. Uh, let me ask you a question: where, where are these chefs all cigar smokers? All of them. So they have to be cigar smoker. Uh, That's criteria. The first, the first <coughs> chef's edition that we did. Uh, they were cigar smokers, but I think that these five chefs are avid cigar okay. smokers. You know, <laughs> there's a difference, you so. know, that they really enjoy. Right. Um, uh, and then they all have their different likes, but uh, if I have a story, we had three of the chefs come down to the farm. Mm -hmm. It was very impressive. They flew in a helicopter to the farm. This is the first time a <laughs> helicopter has landed in my, in my family farm, which was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, you have these three st uh, chefs on stage with different uh, media because it was a press release. Yeah. And you got these chefs smoking up there and then just the demon chef, Alvin, was mm -hmm. just all over the place being really hilarious and then just being very keen on, on how much he smokes cigars. So these, these chefs are more about being really avid and they really enjoy it. They go to it a lot, you know. Now your dad and Avo were very close. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how well did you know Avo? Did you know him at all? Avo... 
was like the grandfather. Like, uh -huh. I mean, I'm not gonna say I never had, but <laughs> another, a third grandfather. Okay. Um, actually, I, my last grandfather passed away when I was five years old. So growing up, Abo was like my grandfather. I see. Um, okay. Abo came into the picture before Davidoff. That's true. Yes. yes. That's so, right. um, Abo was a pianist mm -hmm. in San Juan, right? right? In one of the hotels in San Juan, and he would sell uh, actually real estate <laughs> <laughs> off the piano, and then <laughs> and he would meet with different people on the golf course and the hotels, and uh -huh. that's kind of how he started out. He met a friend at a golf course, mm -hmm. and uh, his friend, this friend, was friends of my father. And he said, "Avo, your name is awesome. You can, mm -hmm. you have a great personality. You can make a cigar out of this." Okay. You know, and I had this person in the American Republic. I want you to meet. So Avo goes to the American Republic mm -hmm. and meets my father, and they start a brand. Uh, right. One of the, Avo's best decisions ever was to m pay uh, for the signer to create his band to. Um, in my opinion, it's still one of the best bands in the market, which is his name all mm -hmm. in the band. I know, it's, it's very it's, cool. And he paid a lot of money for that design. And they're hard to remove. <laughs> very hard to remove. The material is a little tough. But um, mm, Avo was going to the American Republic uh, almost monthly, if not monthly, sometimes even more. Every time he ran out of cigars trying to sell it off the piano, Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's when he would have yeah. to go and restock. Right. And if, in the early days, he would actually carry the cigars under his arm and take them to San Juan in the in the airplane. So there was right. no shipping involved. Right. Right. Or declaration of goods. Right. You could exactly. Say. Yeah. But that's how he started. Okay. And he, I would see him every month. And I remember mm -hmm. very specifically, he would basically uh, put me on his lap and he would like bounce me around <laughs> and you know, um, and just he was always there every month. Me growing up. When we moved to a bigger house when I was uh, five years old, uh, mm -hmm. this is when Avo uh, is no longer selling cigars out of his piano. Mm -hmm. He's actually <laughs> he's graduated. He's graduated. <laughs> he's had his cigars in the United States now. Mm -hmm. uh, Davidoff is doing the distribution for him. Avo decides to buy himself a nice, long piano. You know, mm -hmm. you know, like a grand, a grand piano, piano, right? One of the big ones, one mm -hmm. of the nice ones. And we call this uh, Avo's poor piano when Avo didn't have the money to buy right. himself a grand piano. He decided to give it to my father. Uh, so I own Avo's piano, which is pretty cool. Well, I have a piano that he actually <laughs> played and he signed it for me. How do you nice. like that? Yeah, my, nice. I brought my piano to it uh, when we were in our old location over mm -hmm. here, a couple of miles away. And um, we were going to have an event with Avo. And I said, you know, maybe I'll bring my piano in and he can. He'll entertain us, you know. Mm -hmm. And he did. And I said, Would you mind signing my piano? <laughs> and he did. But it's all faded now. Oh, it finally it's, faded out. But yeah. it's still there. You know? But yeah. But um, so Avo gave me that piano, or gave mm -hmm. my father that piano. Wow. And that piano sat there forever. Mm -hmm. Nobody played it. Nobody played um, it. It wasn't until I turned 16 years old that, uh, for many different reasons, I mm -hmm. decided to start playing the piano. Oh, nice. So mm -hmm. now I play on Avo's piano, and I've been playing for the last 11 years. Oh. And uh, a lot of the first steps into piano was with Avo. So he, like, wow. he's the one that taught me the twelve bar blues. Yeah. Do you play he, jazz? Uh, a little bit. So he oh, taught yeah. me. He taught me a little bit of jazz. Nice. You know, so it's uh, my beginning steps were with him, mm -hmm. and he was always like that grandfather figure. That's great. So yes, I knew him very well. Yeah. I know. I met him many mm -hmm. times. He was always a gentleman and just a terrific guy. And uh, and uh, I know he's been sorely yeah. missed. I can tell May you that. May he rest in peace. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, you met uh, John Pulo earlier, who I know you've met before, mm -hmm. when he was in the Dominican earlier this year. He, he wanted me to ask you, who's Superman? Superman uh, is a, uh, he's been working with us now coming up 24 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I just have, I, I know how many years he's been working with us because I've worked with him and I, I tend to ask him this question a lot, how long he's been with the company, right. uh, what's his favorite memories. Uh, but Superman is this older gentleman very nice gentleman mm -hmm. uh, and very hardworking uh, person that works in the blending department for Davidoff. Okay. So we have a blending department where all the blends get created for all the cigars. All the blends get created on a different room. They're mm -hmm. weighed, uh, measured, and basically every roller gets 40 ounces. Okay. And these 40 ounces, they have to produce a certain qu quantity of cigars depending on the size. Now. Superman is a very humble man mm -hmm. that barely knows how to read or write. 
You know, really? it, it's uh, okay. but he is one of the most versed people I know in tobacco terms. So he right. doesn't need <laughs> that, right. you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, um, and he he's amazing. He is mm -hmm. somebody that taught me a lot. Uh, when you're gonna create a blend, so tobacco has to be a certain humidity sure. uh, in the filler. Mm -hmm. uh, we always say I percentage between 11 and 13 percent. Who's the person that says if that tobacco is good to be blended? Mm -hmm. It's Superman. Okay. Uh, who is the person that from far they they say, hey, is this tobacco good? And he sees it from far, he's like, oh yeah, that tobacco is good. Or no, that mm -hmm. tobacco is too dry. Oh, it's perfect. It's on point. And he's the one that he's just been working in it all his life, and he knows the leaf. Mm. You know, he doesn't know the cigars, he doesn't know the farm, he knows the leaf. He knows when right. it's ready to be blended. And his last name is Marte, Mars. Superman uh. from Mars. That's, it's, it's just great, <laughs> you know, and that's his legit real name. That's his, that's his ID, his, his birth certificate. That's what his parents named him. Uh, so we have Superman working for us, and oh he's God. one of the key people in the blending department. And the joke is, mm -hmm. why are Davidoff cigars so great? Uh -huh. It's because we have Superman working for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, you already sort of mentioned this, but what do you look for in a good cigar? Mm. You sort of touched on it, but what do you, you know, you said you, you, you're try, kind of drawn now to stronger blends, or more full flavored, I should say. Blends well, more. when you look at a cigar, you have to analyze it uh, with all your senses. There's five mm -hmm. senses involved, right? So the first thing that you're gonna look at is basically sight, sure. right? So you're gonna look at a cigar from far. You're gonna see the wrapper, you're gonna see its shine, you're mm -hmm. gonna see how oily it is. And you can actually, when you touch it, then you can confirm how oily it really is. But you're mm -hmm. gonna see the veins, how veiny it is. Once you actually start into smoking the cigar, you're gonna even see the burn line. You're gonna see the colors of the ash, the colors of the wrapper, you're gonna see the head. So really what you're looking for is for construction. Construction and quality of the tobacco, just visually. Mm -hmm. And then once you touch, you can actually also feel if, if, it's, if the cigar is well, uh, right. well made or not. Um, for viewers, it, this is a sin. Don't go into a store and start touching touching right. cigars. That's a sin, uh, especially when you, we work on cigars for five years and uh, uh, over 300 hands go into making the cigar. Uh, you pressing a little bit on cigar could damage a cigar forever. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's your cigar, like you want to look for a cigar as well constructed, right? Um, a cigar that ha has good shine, that mm -hmm. it's in well well maintained humidity. Mm -hmm. Your partners are very important. By partners, what do I mean? I mean the store, mm -hmm. the person that sells your cigar, your retailer, you know, this person is the one that's maintaining your cigars in perfect condition after we've done all the work. Right. And if the store is not selling you the cigars in the proper condition, then it's all in vain, of course. you know. Yeah. And then if you're looking for flavor, uh, every person is different, so sure. you can't really say anything. I personally like cigars that are positive of taste, mm -hmm. meaning this is uh, the philosophy of Davidoff. Positive of taste, balance, stimulation, and consistency. So okay. positive of taste means that it doesn't have any negative connotations. It's not a cigar you're gonna smoke it and then you're gonna be tasting it two days later. <laughs> you know, uh, there's no aftertaste, and, and I say aftertaste, it's, that's a bad word, but I, you could also know, say yeah. residual taste. Okay, uh, um, so we're not talking about the finish, we're talking about uh, after that. Because it can be a long finish. That's sure. not a bad thing. No. But if there's a negative connotation or a negative aftertaste, mm. you know, that tastes like metal or mm. it tastes in a certain way that is very rough, mm -hmm. that is not very well fermented, you know, or the blend is just off balance. Mm -hmm. And by I mean, hey, is it too bitter or is it too sweet? You know, it has to be a balance where all your taste buds are being stimulated more or less in an even way. That way the cigar will not be lineal in taste. And then consistency, it's, you can only uh, start really judging that once you have had a cigar multiple times. Meaning, I smoked Davidoff Special R. Mm -hmm. Today, I smoke it five years from now, I smoke it 10 years from now, and it's always the same cigar. Yeah. You know, we like to say that we make friends down in the factory. You know, we make uh, over 20 million friends every single year that we <laughs> send all over the world. That's nice. You know, and if you find a friend that you like, in our cigars, then if you're in China and you, you, you're alone, you go to a, a cigar store that has a Davidoff product, you know, a Davidoff cigar, you'll find your friend there and that friend will be loyal to you. 
you know. That's true. I've smoked a lot of them over the years, fortunately. Yeah. And uh, they really are consistent. And, you know, I boiled it down pretty much to the ones I, I like, too, the most. I, um, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, the Nicaragua. I thought that was terrific. And then the Escurio came out, which took it like a whole nother level. Yeah, Davidoff and has definitely been uh, exploring new territories, yeah. right? And Davidoff Nicaragua, you could say, was the first one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you maybe, maybe don't count Puro de Oro, because Puro de Oro is still in Dominican Republic. Right. But uh, yeah, uh, Nicaragua basically is that first cigar where we really started branching out into tobaccos from other countries. Mm. And to basically make a cigar 100% with Nicaraguan tobaccos and try to maintain the Davidoff philosophy mm. uh, was tough. Okay. Uh, you know, because many Nicaraguan tobaccos uh, tend to be very lineal in taste, sweet, bitter, mm. uh, very habano like. And you have to really find the balance between all the tobaccos that Nicaragua has to offer to maintain a balance on the acid side, on the salty side, on the spicy side. Right. That way it's not just one dimensional. And Escurio brought in sweet and spice yeah. uh, from Cubra and Matafina. And then we have also launched other tobacco, other cigars that have tobaccos from other countries as well here and there, um, late Peru, Mexico. But mm -hmm. we're definitely branching out into much more uh, taste experiences that are diverse. Do you plan on going into blending ever? Uh, have you ever thought about making your own cigar, so to speak? Uh, I've definitely been tinkering on my own with with tobaccos and okay. blending, and I know what I like, I know what tobaccos I like, what what percentages, more or less, mm. I like of each cigar. Like, I know blending. I've been trained in blending. Yeah. Uh, but I will, as long as I'm with Davidoff, and right mm -hmm. now I'm with Davidoff, right. and for the, for, for, for the future and forever, probably. Right. Okay. You never know. But, right. um, and, but basically, uh, I am right now in marketing. If, if Davidoff is, needs me there, I'm happy there, and okay. also because I get to teach what I love. Oh, that's you know? great. But yeah. definitely, I get to talk about blending all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that cigars is not something that is, the information is readily available out there, you know? Mm -hmm. So little interviews like this and different mm -hmm. uh, seminars that we are able to do, the more we can do, the better we can educate the, the consumer. Sure. When you talk about wines, when you talk about distills, when you talk about food, there's so much material out there in the world for That's this. Yeah. And there's not enough of it in, in cigars and tobacco, right? And right. I feel like if people were more educated then this would, be, on the cigars, this would be a happier world. Yes, well, you that's know? why we have Cigar Advisor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and I, I think we're doing a good job. Um, let, me, let me put this uh, this way. Mm -hmm. Davidoff cigars have an impeccable reputation for quality, and you've already described a lot of what makes them so, so unique. Yet a lot of cigar smokers tend to shy away from them because of the price. So here's your chance to sell some cigars. Give us a reason why cigar smokers should smoke a David, or even just try one if they haven't. We have about 300 cigar rollers. Um, there's a thousand out there just working on the processes. Wow. Just to make sure that all your cigars are perfect. That the tobacco is fermented properly mm -hmm. to an extent that the tobacco is aged as long as it needs to be. So that every time that t tobacco leaf gets to a cigar form, it's perfect. You know, so the amount of work that we put into it is crazy. The amount of man hours that we put into it is mm -hmm. insane. <laughs> and it's just so that you can make sure that every time you smoke a cigar is perfect. Right. And if you can't afford it, spoil mm -hmm. yourself from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Because there is no better way to end a weekend or a bad day than with a great cigar that's going to be loyal to you. That's it, true. It's, some people can smoke it more often. If mm -hmm. you can't smoke it as often, from time to time, spoil yourself. And that can guarantee you that you're going to find a Davidoff cigar that you like. We have so many different types of offerings. The late hour, which is spices yeah, with love whiskey. That too. You have Nicaragua, Habano type. You got the spices of Brazil. You got the mm -hmm. traditional Davidoff, the core brand that are much more Dominican and milder. Mm -hmm. And then you have a wide variety of limited editions that are all just phenomenal. So okay. it's, this is something that's never going to fail you. And I can guarantee you the price is worth it. Right. There's a reason why it's priced that way. Well, Klaus, mm -hmm. thank you oh, Gary. for joining us today. I appreciate it very much. And I'm Gary Korb for Cigar Advisor, Master Blenders. Talk at you next time. Thank you for having me. <laughs>